Good morning, everyone. And once again, it's very nice to see such a warm response on a Sunday morning and probably not an unexpected uh, when we have a speaker like Dr. Sonal Man Singh. Uh, my name is Anandarup Bhattacharya. I am the on behalf of IIT Kharagpur and the Academy of Classical and Folk Arts at IIT Kharagpur, which I currently head. Uh, I once again welcome all of you to this online Thanks. seminar on the origins of Natya Shastra by delivered by none other than one of the cultural icons of the country. A great cultural ambassador, a cultural philosopher, Nritya Guru, and possibly one of the finest exponents of Indian classical dance that the country has ever produced. Padma Vibhushan awardee, Dr. Sonal Man Singh. But more than all of these, Sonalji is very dear to us because she is also part of our now part of our IIT Kharagpur family. She's a distinguished visiting faculty of IIT Kharagpur associated with our Academy of Classical and Folk Arts, as well as the Center of Excellence on Indian Knowledge Systems. So Sonalji definitely needs no introduction, but still it's my official responsibility, our official responsibility to introduce the speaker of the day. And for, to, for doing this, I would request my dear colleague, Professor Orjun Mukherjee uh, to kindly introduce Dr. Sonal Man Singh. Professor Sonal Man Singh. Arjun, over to you. Namaste. Good morning to all. It is my privilege to introduce Dr. Sonal Man Singh, the iconic cultural personality of India and member of parliament, Rajya Sabha. Dr. Sonal Man Singh has been unique among dancers who have mastered multiple Indian classical dance forms from different parts of India, like Bharatnatyam, Orissi, and Cho. She's a great scholar and seasoned art administrator who has performed, given lectures, and conducted workshops in 90 countries around the world. As the founder president of the Center for Indian Classical Dances in 1977, she has trained several talented performers who are carrying the message of Indian culture all over the world. She is the recipient of the high civilian honors of Padma Bhushan in 1992 and Padma Vibhushan in 2003 from the President of India. She has been honored with Sangeet Natak Academy Ratna, Fellow of the Sangeet Natak Academy. She is also nominated as one of the Navratnas for Swachh Bharat Mission by Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. She has served as chairperson of National Sangeet Natak Academy and serving the second term as trustee of Indira Gandhi National Center for the Arts. We are very privileged to have her as a distinguished visiting professor for IIT Kharagpur associated with the Academy of Classical and Folk Arts and the Center for Indian Knowledge Systems. It is our pleasure to have this session today. We welcome you once again, Dr. Man Singh. Over to you. Namaskar. Namaste. Namahate. I bow to that divine spark which is in everything, everywhere, in everyone. And therefore, we join our hands tip to wrist, balancing the five tattvas, the five elements at the tip of our fingers, and bring together the Shakti and Shiva, the hormones, all energies come together in a circle. In short, we balance ourselves and then offer our ego, which resides here in our brain, by bowing the head. This is the namaste I offer to all of you. And I pray for auspiciousness and beatitude Kalyan to descend on everyone. Thank you very much for this opportunity. My first online lecture after uh, my visit in October to 
show my face and to say thank you and to uh, start my tenure of three years. And uh, somehow with this, that and other parliament sessions and so many things, you know, we are able to today come together. You are all brilliant young people coming from all over the country and I think some from abroad also maybe. This is a field that we spoke about yesterday in my uh, seminar of Vikasit Bharat. The idea of India that was, that is, and that will become by 2047, fully developed, fully aware, fully conscious of all the potentials which have been realized, which some have lied, lied dormant, uh, lain dormant, some have now sprung up. We are not aware as individuals ourselves what we are capable of either it happens by a guru vakya a shakti path a self-realization which happens if we are fortunate how to tap our supta shakti those energies those that potential for which we are born use this body this mind which has been gifted to us. I think uh, Natya Shastra is all about this. It is as scientific as it can be by telling us about each and every part of the body, the kinetic energies, the connections, <clears throat> the usages, and what it can, it is capable of creating. I will begin. First of all, what is Natya? The word is a composite word. It contains everything, all our activities, all our movements, all actions, all expressions, sentiments, moods, situations, actions, reactions, and much more. The rhythm of our walk, the rhythm of our uh, inhalation and exhalation, the rhythm of our thoughts, everything is contained in this word, not dear that which gives expression to all these and many more elements in our daily life. And <clears throat> when it is uh, systematized, it becomes Shastra, a compendium, a text, as you study, maybe online, offline, whatever, but there are texts that you study. The thoughts of those great scientists, those great engineers, those great people who found this, that and other things about which we didn't know earlier. So today is such a such an occasion to see, to understand why Natya Shastra has been called Natya Veda or the fifth Veda. Now the word Veda you know, there are four Vedas. I'm sure many of you know that the origins of Indian thought system, which has come to us, is from the four Vedas, which means that there were, there were Manishis. There were thought processors and philosophers and uh, great Rishis, Drashtas, seekers, seers, were already there. And the cumulative makkhan, the butter, the essence of all that came in the Vedas. Natya Veda. 
So I will tell you later which are the elements that were taken from each of the Veda for creating the fifth Veda, Natya Veda. Just imagine what an exalted position Natya has been given. The science of Natya. Amazing. Anyway, uh, I thought I'll first come to this. Natya Shastra could be answers to five questions which were posed by students, disciples of Bharata Muni, the great Bharata Muni who is supposed to have written, compounded, the Nat composed the Natya Shastra. Okay, the first is, what is the origin of Natya Veda? I was just talking about that. We'll come to that and how it emerged. Second is, who are the entitled ones, the Adhikaris? It's a very important <laughs> word. I had to become entitled to stand on a public stage and dance, perform, talk after many decades of tapasya, of learning from masters, from gurus, and practicing day after day for hours on end, reading, thinking. It, it is not for everyone. One month, one pill, one capsule, and you become a dancer or a musician or whatever. You are studying, you are working hard yourself, you know that what I mean. To get grades, good grades in your examination, and then to get a good job or whatever you want to do, PhD, whatever. You have to be an adhikari. You have to be entitled, and that entitlement comes with very, very hard work. So the question is, then who are the entitled ones who can read Natya Ved and work accordingly? Third is, how many elements are in Natya Shastra? My God, difficult one to answer, I'm telling you. Number four. What are the specific means, pramana, of understanding Natya Shastra? Pramana is kind of a proof. You have to prove. Number five, what and how is it seen in Prayoga? So it is not only the book, it's not only the theory, but the practice of it is as important, or I would say more important. So these are the five basic questions pertaining to Natya Shastra. And the significance and meaning of Natya as Anukruti. Anukruti is something like, let's say, a film, you know. You have watched, uh, you have watched, um, I don't want to be tragic, I don't want to bring in tragic element, a happy element. You have watched somebody, crack a joke in your uh, group and you are laughing and you are watching others also laughing outrageously or just smiling or just being uh, you know fired different people have different ways of expression and you're watching all that then you convert those observations in something either in writing your diary or uh, an essay or you prepare a small documentation, or you put it as your own a little film, something on Insta or Facebook, that would be called Anukruti of what you have seen in reality, and you bring it back to your memory, through your memory, and you put it down. That is Anukruti. So the significance of Natya Shastra, Natya, as Anukruti, as well as Bhavanu Kirtana. That is, you are also extolling what you saw, what you experienced, Bhavanu Kirtana. And these two words I'm taking from the Shaivite scholar, Shaivite uh, seer, 11th century Kashmir Abhinavagupta Acharya. 
And these two words apply to Natya perfectly. Now, I go to <coughs> the basic. Natya is a performative art compendium. It's not enough to sit and talk about it. You have to get up and do it. You have to sing or to play an instrument. You have to dance. You have to act. All the performative arts are combined in Natya Shastra. Now, what is the vehicle through you which you do this? Tell me. Is it just words? No, you cannot perform just with words. Oration is something different. It, 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 oration, oratory is a part of uh, Natya. No, it's the body. It's the entire body from top to toe. It's amazing. And believe you me, from wherever you have come, whether you have seen tribal, folk, classical, dance performances, even contemporary, whatever you call them, Bollywood, through what are they performing? It's simple through the body. So how do we look at our body? Do we look at it at all? I wonder, I often wonder. Being a dancer, training as a dancer, being having been trained as a dancer, I am so aware and conscious of my posture, the way I walk, the way I look, the way I hold something. There is grace, there is strength, there is purpose. Nothing is the third patra. Body is the instrument and we train it. So I'll come to that later, how we train it. But there's a beautiful sutra, um, um, adage, as you call it. Shariram adya khalu, dharma sadhanam. Sharir is the body. Adya, the first one, the original. Dharma. Please do not misunderstand dharma as religion in English. And we know that English is inadequate to translate and to explain words of our languages, languages that are from this soil, which contain our ideas. So dharma is not religion. Dharayati iti dharma, which upholds the cosmic laws which uphold the creation. It's a larger picture. In our daily life, as I was told, Swadharma ka palan karo. Swadharma. Who am I? What am I here for? What should I do? What am I supposed to do? How best I can do it? You know, in simple language. That is my dharma. To be good, to be kind, and all that, all that, all that. But also to perform my duties with full responsibility and awareness. Simple. Shariram Adya Kalu Dharma Sadhanam. Sadhan is the instrument. Whatever you wish to do, whatever, drive a car, be a mechanic, be a scientist, go, go in Gaganyan, dance, sing, play an instrument, whatever, write, paint. Everything is done through the body, through the hands, through the legs, through the body, the entire body, eyes, ears, smell, speak. Taste, touch, all the five indriyas become active. And through this, you perform your duties, you carry on your responsibilities, you fulfill your dreams. Shariram adya khalu dharma sadhanam. So do not neglect the body. That's the first principle for any performer, any performing artist. If one of the body, one of the Anga Upanga, one of the limbs, major limb, right, entire arm, entire leg, the back, the, 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 the torso, the face, and then the minor ones. Are you aware where 
your eyes go yato hastaha tato drishti yato drishti tato manaha because mind controls the movement and wherever my hand goes my eyes my gaze must go i'm talking generally okay because often i've seen ah kya hai ye what they are doing they are not aware yato hastah tato drishti yato drishti tato manah yato manah tato bhava without bhava without something that you are thinking of your mind will not direct any part of your body yato manah tato rasa rasa oh god again a different a difficult word there is no equivalent to this word rasa essence the very essence the juice oh my god millions of roses and one little jar of perfume that is rasa so the rasa that you create through your body through your action through your eyes through everything that is the goal in life ever you react with you meet you converse with you go with there has to be beauty there has to be sentiment there has to be love there has to be oh my god we can ask how can you do that all the time that is the goal i said that's the goal so yato hasta tato drishti yato drishti tato manah yato manah tato bhava there has to be a bhava and yato bhava tato rasah shariram adya khalu dharma sadhanam so i i take you down that and <clears throat> our shastra natya shastra compendiums the great texts they are so liberal that they give you a large playing field for you to experiment to innovate to try out different things different ways of moving different ways of oh my god that's how we are still alive imagine after almost 2000 years of natya shastra our <clears throat> our traditions of performative arts are still vibrant and alive and despite so many challenges that historically i just want to quickly tell you we are aware the last 1000 years i only go to 1000 years have been very stressful for this land for this nation for this mitti the soil hello is somebody talking i request everybody else to please go on mute thank you i hope i'm i hope i'm not boring anyone am i no 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 not at all not at all not at all madam please continue i think people yeah, are yeah yeah, yeah. people so, are mesmerized so the last 1000 years just imagine that it the, the indian the bharatiya nritya sangeet geet vajintra instrument everything sanskrit everything was given boxes job maro go underground do whatever everything banned so much so that till 1946 even before the angrez they left india willy nilly they passed an act through which a devdasi act through which dancing in temples as a ritual was banned gurus had gone underground the dancers were hither thither in in rags but the core the sentiment the bhava the rasa the text remained and just imagine that even today internationally globally much before bollywood tollywood mollywood came indian dance and music have held the world stage like that right through all this especially in the last 100 150 years where world began to recognize oh my god what is this fantastic thing we don't need huge settings we don't need all these blum 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 lights i can stand alone in the bolshoi theater of moscow which i've done twice solo dancer with only my musicians 
five of them holding the entire stage where 100 ballet dancers would be on stage and a hundred piece orchestra would be playing and people thousands of them watch but how does that happen because of yato hasta tato drishti yato drishti tato mana yato mana tato bhava yato bhava tato rasaha they forget where they are they see characters floating around they see situations they see wonderful scenes of love and the navarasas come full full blast shringar love and beauty mm -hmm. the way i can imitate if i was there on stage and you were there in front of me you'd enjoy that more but still i'll try <laughs> shringar it's beauty is a beauty of love and love is the dominant rasa in creation without love there would be no creation they would not be coming together of shiva shakti of the female and male just imagine we would not be there to enjoy the beauty so now how do i translate it i create situations between ram and sita between krishna and radha we take archetypal motives deliberately I, if i say nita and suresh who's nita and who's suresh who's bothered but the minute you take archetypal motives something happens here there are echoes there are vibrations there is a kind of a recognition which cuts across time language religion everything so shringar or whatever then and the man could do this just by eyes i i hope you can see my eyes then look wow kitni sundar hai and she would be so the entire body would be working and the navarasa i'll explain shringar is there then the veera the heroism nobility is there when we say veeram dhanur bhanjane when shri ram lifted the great mighty bow of shiva and broke it into two like a feather and then there is karunyam ahalya pavane and ahalya who had gone into deep samadhi just by ram touching her feet not ram putting the uh, feet on on foot on on, on the head please let's not mistake it ram was told by guru vishwamitra go and touch her feet and take her blessings and by the touch of shri ram at her feet ayodhya um, ahalya came out of a meditation karunyam and for a fraction of a mo moment shri ram became narayana she had the darshan karunyam it is compassion it is a sahadharmita and then hasyam Hasyam Shurpanakha Mukhe, Shurpanakha who tried to woo Ram and Ram just said, please spare me, is Hasyam. And there is uh, Raudram, Ravana Mardane, when he destroyed Ravan, vanquished Ravan in the battle. And Adbhutam Sindhogiri Sthapane, Adbhutam wonderment and surprise when the sena of monkeys and bhalus they just built the ram setu across the ocean and there is bhayam aghe ram was not afraid of anything or anyone only of doing papa agha something wrong wrong doing bibhatsam anyamukhe he could not look at any other woman's face except that of his wife sita these are the ashtarasas described in Bharatanatya Shastra, with so many nuances and so many shades and so many anu, uh, the Uddipana Bhava, Vibhava, Anubhava, to get lost. But the point is that you and I, every day, we are experiencing major 
bhavas, rasas, we do not even know about it. So what Natya Shastra does is analyze it. You are all so scientific, you know, you put labels on everything, you analyze everything, you systematize everything. This was done 2000 years ago. Even these fleeting emotions are analyzed. The shades are analyzed. They're given names. I think all this should be something very new to you because somehow we look at the arts as science, arts. Huh? No, I'm sorry. The science of the art is something amazing. It analyzes you and me as we had never thought anyway. And then Abhinava Gupta Acharya in 11th century added the last one, Shanta, where all the rasas converge and there is calm. Now I'll take you forward quickly that had the origin of Natya Shastra. So it, uh, we, we are told that Bharata Muni, the sage Bharata, was ordered by Brahma to create a Natya Ved, to create something that would please everyone cutting across the different stratas of society. Just imagine, now we are talking of Jati, Pati, Varna, Bhed, Palana, Dhimka. Nothing. Cutting across, which would please everyone, which would address their pain, their sorrow, their problems, and bring peace and joy to them. That is the goal of Natya Shastra, creating Natya Shastra. And that is why Tukhartanam, Shokartanam, Shramartanam, those who are tired, those who are deep in sorrow, who are paid, who are burdened with so many problems, all this go down, all these are addressed when you watch a wonderful performance, you forget. It brings peace, it brings calm, it brings equilibrium. That's something for which people go and meditate. So I have said in all my lectures and talks and introductions, commentaries around the world <clears throat> and in India, yoga is now a keyword, yoga, yoga, karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti yoga, nada yoga, sahaja yoga, so many. This is Nritya Yoga, is a dynamic yoga. The yogasanas are static. You can stand in one pose, sit here in, on one little carpet and you can perform your yogasana. No, but we doing Nritya Yoga, we are doing dynamic yoga. We cover all directions, Sabdisha. We cover earth and uh, sky and earth. So there's a very beautiful richa from the Rig Veda. It's a woman seer who says, Aham Rudraya Dhanuratanomi. I am the one who pulls the string of Rudra's arrow, the bow. I am the one. He is only pulling it. Like Krishna said in Bhagavad Gita to Arjun. Come on, do it. I am the one who is really doing it. You are only an instrument. So this is what she says. Rudra, Shiva. Brahmat vishesh harave hantabau. To destroy those who oppose Brahman, the one and only truth. The cosmic truth. The cosmic principle. I am the one. Aham. Janaya Samadam Kranomi. I am the one who distributes equally. Dhyava Prithivi Avivesha. I stretch between earth and the sky. My God, I perform this. And whenever I've done people not understanding Sanskrit, Rig Vedic Sanskrit, they say we had horripilation, we had goosebumps. This is what I learned as a dancer 
This is what people learn as performing, performing artists, that by your art, you stretch between earth and the sky, your energy spread, you go into infinity by your movements, by your bhava. Okay, now I take you forward. So, Brahma called Bharatamuni and said, look, I have complaints from Indra and others that people have been really becoming burdened, you know, create something. Now do perform the story of Samudra Manthana and prepare, bring Asuras also, the anti-gods and the gods and be, you know, be generous, be noble. Come on, you create something beautiful, Natya Prayoga. So this is what he did. And there are the shlokas from the Natya Shastra, which I'm not uh, going to uh, quote. I'm only going to now repeat myself, but I'll tell you exactly what I meant. That which elements were taken from which Veda. Hmm? So, so Brahma took elements from the four Vedas and created Pancham Veda, the Natya Veda, called the Natya Shastra. Jagraha Pathyam Rig Vedat, the text literature from the Rig Veda. Sama Bhyo Gita Mevacha and a melody and Gita, songs, etc. from the Sama Veda, the Swaras. Yajur Vedat Abhinayan. From Yajur Ved, he took Abhinaya. Abhinaya, that which communicates. The Bhava is communicated to the onlooker, the audience. As I keep on telling you now, that is a huge science. We have to learn 28 single hand hastamudras we have to learn 24 double hand hastamudras so many and their different usages for example if i say pataka has the first one the single hand hastamudra you are all using it every day i saw it in Rajya Sabha. every day in the session people were saying wait I want to speak. Ah, all that. No. I, you, here, there, all. Uh, you understand that. Cut. Great. Blessing. So many usages of Patakas alone and how you use it. So he took Abhinaya from Yajurveda, which is the usage of hands, the face, uh, eyes, eyebrows, everything. And Rasan Atharva. Atharva, uh, uh, Atharva Adapi. I talked of Rasa already. So this Atharva Veda is also the one who gives the uh, chemistry, the Rasan Shastra. Even how to uh, stabilize mercury with Nagarjuna did here centuries ago. These are the four Vedas, the four elements that were built in to Natya Veda, Natya Shastra. So just imagine what all we learn. Aha, it's beautiful. And then I bring you to, um, yeah, this is so, so lovely. What is it created for? Sarva Loka Hitartham to Natya Vedo Mahatmana. Hey, Mahatman. Oh, great person, oh, great people, we created, I created Natya Veda for Loka Hita, for the good, for the common good of people. Not for me, not for my, only for my students, my disciples, or chosen few, no. Loka Hitartham, as I said earlier, to bring peace and calm and equilibrium and joy and bliss and delight to all. And I've seen this happen, by the way. You heard, I've been lucky to go to 90 countries, including countries like Sudan, mm. deep into the desert, 600 kilometers deep into the desert. No hijab, no nothing. Uh, tummy open, as you know, Bharatanatyam, Odissi. And people were, they broken down stadium and they put carpets and there were nails and we, I danced with my four musicians. And people were climbing on those tree stumps and trees and oh my God, it was a riot. 
I've been to Sudan, I've been to Chile, I've been to Machu Picchu and Peru. And so why I'm telling you this is wherever I've gone, solo dancing, musicians, nothing else, not even a stool, not nothing. And people, they cannot believe and they are there. There is a bridge of bhava, of rasa, of deeper communication, heart to heart, because art is for heart. It touches you like nothing else. Believe you me. Anyway, so loka hitartham, sarva loka hitartham. And I talked about the adhikari. Who can be the entitled ones? Kushala, those who are adept at performing, having learned all these elements. And with Agdha, who are clever, who are intelligent. You have to be very intelligent, very clever on stage, very pratyutpannamati. Uh, Sometimes it happens, I've seen pleats have opened up or the bun is about to fall. Something has happened. And how you cover it up without losing a beat. That's what I think we all need to learn also how to manage the situation without allowing, without letting people know. All right. Then, Ayogya, there are many more, Pragalbha, Jita, Shama, who's, who can work hard and all that. Ayogya, that's very important to understand. Who are not entitled, who cannot perform, na shakta, na karmani, those who are not given to hard work, those who are slothful, those who are disrespectful, those who do not learn from a guru, but have become swayam who, like today we see many, <laughs> according to Natya Shastra, they are a yogya. Never mind. Social media has made everyone yogya. That's another matter. Okay. Then I would come to, there's so much more, but I just want to take you uh, through this. Um, where is my... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you about a little bit. And uh, Anand Rupji, you need to tell me about the time because when I speak, I get so involved that I forget. Yeah, you still have time. No, no, you, you please, please go ahead. <laughs> so the first performance as uh, Brahmaji, the great Brahma, had um, ordered Bharata Muni to organize that performance where you bring in anti-gods and gods together and create good goodwill, you know. They all work together. So, they said, Samudra Manthan would be a very apt Anukriti. Samudra Manthan had happened eons ago where the ocean was churned and this, that, and other, and so many beautiful things came out. But the first thing to come out was poison. Just imagine, hala hala, deadly poison, the fumes of which the, the anti-gods ran that way, the gods ran that way, and uh, Srishti, the creation would come to an end. Why poison? Shiva had to come and contain it in his throat. Became Neelakantha, the blue-throated one. You see it uh, euphemistically, do you, you, you see it any way, which way you want. Drishtanta. You analyze it. Day after day, every day in our lives, we are doing this manthan inside, the churning. We are thinking, we are feeling, we are churning. And every day, Maybe some poison comes out about somebody, you know, Isha, jealousy, fight. Hmm. Sometimes, same day, something else comes out. You've seen something beautiful and you say, ha, maza gaya. All these things refer to our own lives. We have to look at it that way also. And this is the beauty of our tradition our thought, our philosophy, that everything runs parallelly at both levels, laukic 
that is pertaining to this loka, to us, all of us, and alokik, that which happens in the minds at a different level, where we are dancing with the gods, the anti-gods, the apsaras, the gandharvas. They happen parallelly. My God, this is not in Greece even. Forget it. This is not in any, no Egyptian, no Greece, no Sumerian. Forget all that. Civilizations, they were great, yes. But here, the abstraction is so much that it's like pulling out one hair and trying to split it. And yet, those abstractions, the philosophical axioms have been put into practice through our art traditions. And this is the greatness and the reason for their vibrancy even today. So what happens? Shiva comes and things become normal. We all have to become Shiva ourselves. We have to drink the poison. We have to contain it, not let it affect our life. But we have to understand the reason. OK, then other things come, apsaras. The heavenly nymphs come and they come dancing, Rambha, Menaka, Tilottama, to bring beauty and joy. And there is a Shankar, the Nada, the sound, so many beautiful things. Then what are they churning the ocean for? Amrita, the elixir, the ambrosia of immortality. My God, who wants to become immortal? I don't. I hope you also not. This one life is enough. Let's work at it. But the point is immortality sought after, not only by humans, but also by the gods and asuras, suras and asuras. Sura, asura. They're churning and churning. And then at the end of it all, Dhanvantari, the divine physician emerges from the waters holding the Kalesha of Amrita. Ah, this is what we wanted. And the Asuras jump at it. You know, they are anyway more energetic. And they run away with the Kalesha. <laughs> so again, the gods say, oh my God, what will we do now? They'll become immortal. So they pray to Narayana Vishnu. Vishnu comes as the enchantress Mohini and uh, persuades, you know, diplomacy, persuades Asuras, listen, you will fight among yourselves, give it to me, I'll distribute it equally. And they say, okay, 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 they are all enchanted by the great beauty, celestial beauty anyway. This is the quality of Asura, where you are easily distracted from your goal. Remember that. And then, Mohini, of course, cleverly seats the Asuras on one and uh, Devas on one side and yeah, yeah, ye karke, karke, karke. She manages to, Vishnu as Mohini, manages to distribute the Amrita to Devas. One Asura was very clever. He was watching and he quickly takes the garb of Devas, goes and sits with them. And just as a drop falls from Mohini's Kalesha, Mohini realizes, Vishnu realizes, oh my God, and chops the head. And that becomes Rahu and Ketu. The head is Rahu, the body is Ketu. After having said all this, they, they were doing performing this. This is a perform, performance story I'm telling you. That which happened eons ago is being repeated as a performance. Performance. All this is happening, and the stage, on the stage, the Asuras, those who were enacting the Asura role, they realized, no, 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 we won't accept defeat. And they ran hither and thither. So Indra, the chief of the gods, took the Danda and beat them. From that day, the Danda, that stick, is called Jarjari. That which removes all obstacles, all badhas, all problems. And it is always for any classical Natya Prayoga. 
performance is first respectfully placed on the stage with all the rituals. Don't be afraid of the word ritual. Every day you bathe, I hope you do. That is also a ritual. Every day you brush your teeth and gargle, that's also a ritual. You brush your hair, that's also a ritual. We have become anemic to these terms and think, ah, kai is a, ah, old. No, <laughs> these terms are applicable in our daily lives from morning till night and night till morning. So, that from that day onwards, the story of Samudra Manthana became a permanent part, element of the performative arts. Now, I want to tell you that once when I had my whole repertory group performing this on stage in Delhi, <laughs> when the Apsaras emerged on stage during the churning, one of them, her boyfriend was the, doing the role of Asura. He forgot. His consciousness, his awareness shifted. He looked at her and they were going with the devtas. He ran after her and was trying to grab her. She ran into the wings and he ran after. And in the wings, you know, inside, he stood, go back, get back. <laughs> Audience clapped. They thought that was part of the choreography. So unintentionally, the Hasya Rasa emerged. There was Adbhuta, Mandamant. There was Hasya. There was Rodra, where the uh, dancer got very angry with her boyfriend. and was always going to beat, her, beat him up in the wings. <laughs> he came running back, wiping his sweat, sort of. And she came back dancing. There is uh, so much beauty and meaning to everything we do. Sometimes we get, people say, oh, we get tired. And I say, what is there to get tired about? You get tired only when you are not interested, when your mind and body are not together, when you are just doing something for the sake of doing. But if you apply your energies properly, to everything you do, every, every gesture, every word, it becomes a mantra, it becomes Shakti. I want to quote this beautiful shlok from the first Adhyaya, the first chapter of Natya Shastra, which is so true. Natad Jnanam. There is no knowledge, Jnan. Natad Shilpam. Any visual plastic art, nasa vidya, that greater knowledge, gyan and vidya are two different words. I won't go into it, but each word in Sanskrit has its own place and meaning. Nasa vidya, aisi koi vidya nahi hai. Nasa kala, aisa koi art nahi hai. There is no such art. Nasa yoga, there is no such yoga. Natat karma, there is no such action which does not exist, which is not shown through Natya Shastra. It covers all. It covers everything you can think of. And this is all contained in just one shloka. Okay? Now, I will quickly take you to the last, uh, uh, last thing. Yeah, that, uh, oh my God, I don't want to bore you now, but when I come physically, I'll show you there. Uh, in Kharagpur IIT, how many movements of eyebrows you uh, you you know you are thinking or you are angry, you are wondering. All these are counted, and we have to practice them. At which point, which eyebrow will go up or come together or whatever? It has to be done exactly. Eyes, how many movements? My God, you have to learn that. And therefore, even today, I do not wear specs either to read or to see, and I drive my car myself. Okay. Ah, I've driven in Australia, Canada, USA, 
Latin America, Europe, Afghanistan, and in India. So you can imagine. I'm a very strong dri driver, <laughs> as in life, as with the car. Right. And then there are movements of uh, neck, so many movements of neck, and uh, Hasta Mudra, as I told you, of the chest and of the shoulders and of the entire uh, thing. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, oh, okay. You have to see that when I come. Then, after as I told you about the Rasabhava, and uh, somewhere in the cosmic space, it has happened. Now, I will just tell you at the end that why the study of Natya Shastra and understanding the origins of Natya Shastra is important. It's all deeply rooted in life. It is not something up there. It is up there and therefore it is here. The connections are so deep. The connections we make in our everyday life with people, with pets, with flower, with plants, with tree, with bird, with our environment, with, with a home, with a house, with a book, with a photo. We are constantly making connections, but we are not usually aware. Learning about Natya Shastra, picking up some elements for our life is so beneficial. I hope you agree with me. And uh, at this point, I will say thank you very much. Uh, Professor An uh, Anand Rupji, I would appreciate if there are some comments, some questions, or we would take them later, or you'd like me to uh, reply. Whatever you tell me, I'll do that. Thank you. Dhanyabad. Thank you, Sonalji. That was absolutely mesmerizing. I think uh, everybody is glued to their screens. You can see that hardly anybody left. It kept on increasing, <laughs> and uh, there were also some comments. So at this point, just a few things I would like to say is, the first and foremost, I think there are several of professors over here. One thing that we can learn from here is, she ended dot at 12, the, <laughs> the, the sense of time and how to complete what I want to say within the given time. Uh, that's something we all learned uh, once again today. Uh, the other one was the storytelling, how you just held the attention uh, continuously for close to an hour from everyone, um, such and such that nobody on a Sunday morning left. I think the audience numbers kept just growing. Um, so thank you very much, Madam. And of course, the content. I mean, that was so informative, so insightful. Uh, I would, instead of me talking or uh, before I hand it over to Arjun, Maybe we can open the floor for some questions right now. Uh, sure. The audience audience may please raise their hands and then I would request Arjun to please uh, conduct this session. Please raise your hands first and when Professor Mukherjee asks you to, uh, to put forward your question, do it. Uh, thank you, Anand Rupji. Uh, Sonalji. Before I allow someone else to ask a question, may I have a question of myself? Mm -hmm. uh, today, uh, a majority of uh, the Indian population, we are not privileged to have the training in Sanskrit to learn from the Natya Shastra original text. Is there a good translation that you would recommend uh, that can help us delve into the Shastra? Yeah, I I, I'll, I'll, I'll send you the name. I'll send you. We can share Please that with the interested students. Sure. Uh, I will send you. Thank you. OK. There are almost more than 105 participants. Oh, I'm, wonderful. Wonderful. I'm, Thank you. I'm trying to keep a track on 
Uh, who? Arjun, there's a question on the text box, on the chat box. Yes. Uh, there is a question from Vandita Gautam. She writes, much appreciation for the amazing, engaging talk. Uh, am I right to gather that Natya Shastra is not judgmental, but representational and interpretational? If Madam could kindly comment. Anything written is always representational. Anna, what is the point? The point is that it brings together all the elements of life in a scientific way, but which represents the art that is, you know, the art of living. That this has become a very uh, catchphrase now. But this is exactly the art of living. What else is it? Plus, it increases the knowledge. In, it increases one's interest. For example, those who play on any instrument, sarangi or sitar or whatever. Most musicians may not even know from which wood, luckily, from which wood that instrument was created or is created, or which is the better wood among three or four choices. How is it created? Of what the strings are made? How the strings are aligned? You know, I think we had, uh, uh, I had this uh, request from Professor Anand Roop that, you know, Sarangi or Sarud ke baare mein. Exactly. So body as an instrument, do we know? how it is made of what it is made and why it is made and how to align the elements of the body just you know impose superimpose that so up you know the question is something that is not really a question but i think we need to rephrase it if i may say that and it is inspirational, it is representational, it is emotional, it is situational. Whatever you want to add, it is all that and more, according to me. Yeah, OK. Arjun, you have gone on mute for some reason. Yes. Uh, thank you, ma'am. We have another question from Chandray Mondol. She asks, is Natya Shastra interlinked with our individual life painting or it only shows the visual representation? Uh, so I think I've answered that again and again I, during my lecture. And if you can rerun my lecture for the benefit of uh, people or, you know, distribute the essence, then I think the question would be answered automatically. Uh, by the way, I have rehearsal waiting for me at my institute. And a last question, please. And otherwise, you can send me the questions and I can reply to them in writing. But now, one last question, then I'll have to run. Okay. One last question from Sharbani Kormokar. Did the Natya Shastra undergo certain changes and evolutions to accommodate the theatre culture meant for the common people? Natya Shastra, as I said right in the beginning, is so vast, which accommodates everything. It is for all times because it is so interpretational and it clearly tells you that every performer that we dance, that we on the stage as actor or as a singer, instrumentalist, musician, whatever, has the liberty according to his or her intelligence to use this science, right? Like you have the same elements, but then why are so many chemists? Why are so many different theories? And why some people get noble and others don't? It's as simple as that. 
it accommodates everything. That's why it's living today, as I said, after two, how many? 2,000 years at least. And that the arts and the traditions existed before that. Because Bharata Muni has taken the names of at least 24 Natya Acharyas before him. So just imagine. Yeah, it's, it's, it contains everything. And you can use it. It's for usage. It's not only for reading. As I said, Prayoga. The Shastra and Prayoga go together. Only reading is not enough. But according to your intelligence, how you interpret it in your prayoga, in your performance. I once again thank you all. Have a lovely Sunday and uh, eat well, rest well. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Professor Anand Rupji, Professor Arjunji, and all the G's. There are only five G's for that, but we have so many G's. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sonalji. And this was this was a memorable experience for all of us. Uh, thank you very much and hope, hope we will have we'll another have session. Anand yes. Ji, I hope we'll have many more <laughs> memorable experiences right sure. there with you there or online. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.